Hello, my name is Fiorenza Giganti. I am associate professor and head of the Sleep Lab at the Department Neurofarba, University of Florence, Italy. Hi, I'm Serena Malloggi, a PhD student in the research group of Professor Giganti. Today we will talk about the habit of self-awakening. In everyday life, awakening is a central event for the organism leading us to a new behavioral state. Awakening can occur either spontaneously or can be provoked by an external event. As for spontaneous awakening, we know that certain people can usually wake up at the desired time in the absence of external means showing a self-awakening skill. In the scientific literature, individuals who possess this skill are defined as self-awakeners, as opposed to forced awakeners who can wake up at a predetermined time only using external means. The prevalence of the self-awakening habit in the general population appears to change according to age, with higher percentages of self-awakeners among older subjects. Furthermore, in the general population, the prevalence of habitual self-awakeners is not very high, ranging from 10% to 26% in young adults. Self-awakeners usually report lower subjective sleepiness levels upon awakening and during daytime. They claim to maintain more regular sleep-wake schedules, and they more frequently display a morning chronotypology relative to forced awakeners. As for physiological variables occurring during sleep that may contribute to self-awakening, a greater increase of heart rate and stage 1 REM sleep was observed during the last hour of sleep episode in self-awakening condition with respect to forced awakening 1. Surprisingly, psychological factors involved in self-awakening ability are less explored. In our study, we aim to cover this gap by exploring subjective sleep quality, personality traits, anxiety and depression symptoms in self-awakeners and forced awakeners. The study I'm going to present has been conducted in collaboration with the University of Campania, Luigi Van Vitelli. In our study, we first administered a set of questionnaires addressing sleep and awakening habits and features to a wide sample of university students. This questionnaire has been developed by our research group to select self-awakeners and forced awakeners. In particular, we classified as habitual self-awakeners those who declare to never use an alarm clock to wake up in the morning, or to use it but awakening always before it goes off. On the contrary, we considered habitual forced awakeners those who claim to regularly use a device to wake up in the morning and to never wake up before the alarm clock goes off. Selected self-awakeners and forced awakeners were administered a set of questionnaire to explore sleep habits and features, subjective sleep and awakening quality, circadian preference, personality dimension, anxiety and depression levels. Our first set of results regard the prevalence of self-awakening and forced awakening habit. We found that 15% of the sample reported to habitually wake up from nocturnal sleep without using external means, a prevalence similar to those previously observed by studies conducted on samples of comparable age. As for sleep habits, we found that habitual self-awakeners report more regular sleep week schedules compared to forced awakeners, as shown by self-awakeners significantly lower difference in bedtimes and the rest times between weekdays and weekends. Moreover, in self-awakeners we found higher RMAQ scores, indicative of more frequent morningness, as well as advanced sleep week schedules. Globally, these findings confirm those of previous survey conducted on students and adults. As for sleep quality dimension, we found that self-awakeners report to sleep enough during weekdays. Their total sleep time generally corresponds to their optimal sleep duration, 
and they claimed to be satisfied with their sleep and they reported to get up easily, to feel refreshed at awakening and to feel more alert during the day compared to forced awakeners. An innovative aspect of our research concerns the investigation of personality traits of habitual self-awakeners. At this regard, we found that self-awakeners are more conscientious, more open to experience and less extrovert compared to forced awakeners. Personality traits found in self-awakeners may be linked to their ability. In fact, individuals with high conscientiousness display high self-control, self-discipline, and more effective task planning. Also, they are more responsible and more organized than people who score low in this trait. Then, all these psychological features might promote and sustain a habitual self-awakening practice. As for the openness trait, it may be linked to the desire to attempt a usual strategy for awakening, for example, one based on internal signals rather than on a typical clock or other devices. As for the introversion-extraversion dimension, we hypothesize that self-awakeners as more frequently introvert may be primarily prone to rely on their internal sources to achieve their goal of awakening at a predetermined time rather than to adopt external means. This is in line with literature and suggests that introverts are innately more aroused, largely self-sufficient, have uh, an active internal life providing them with impulses that the extrovert conversely seek externally. Overall, our findings show that the habit of self-awakening is linked to a good sleep experience and these results suggest that self-awakeners may be characterized by a well-organized sleep episode that allows them to spontaneously awaken at a desired time with no detrimental effects on daytime functioning. The awakening quality experienced by self-awakeners may be a determining factor in retrospective judgment about the sleep episode quality, but the determinants of good sleep quality in self-awakeners have not yet been systematically explored. Thank you for your attention and thanks to other colleagues who contributed to this study.